This is me at the Aeromedical Centre. This is me beside the Human Training Centrifuge. Now this is me flying an F-15. OK, so I'm not really flying an F-15. This is not an actual fighter aircraft, but I am in a seat many pilots and weapon systems officers return to every year. If you've ever been told to correct your posture, this could be one of the strictest discipline masters you'll ever encounter. Meet the ejection seat trainer. It trains pilots and weapon systems officers to sit properly and tuck their limbs in the right way before they can be ejected. It trains us how to handle situations where most of us would not want to be in, but if that situation detects us, we have to execute all these procedures. We have lots of instructors, very professional. They provide you very good uh, briefing and debriefing through the uh, video system over here. They can, after you have done everything, they will actually bring you to the uh, computer console and then tell you what, what have you done wrong, what can you improve on. I mean, look at it compared to the central field, compared to the SDT, not really as detailed, as intricate, as uh, exciting as those two other pieces of equipment. Um, but personally, it's actually um, my favourite, or, or what I think is most important. After that, Major Teo pulled me over to have a look at the final gem of the Aeromedical Centre. It was something as old as I was, he told me. It was a giant, baby blue behemoth. The hyperbaric chamber lets the air crew experience the symptoms of hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen in the bloodstream. This could result in unconsciousness. Aircraft can go beyond 10,000 feet, a height where the air is thinner and there is less oxygen. A leak in the gas mask could be fatal. A lack of oxygen slows the brain down and renders the air crew unable to function properly. Pilots and trainees, they come back for their aviation physiology training. Uh, they do go through the experience of hypoxia again in the hyperbaric chamber. Um, so we bring them in here, we bring them up to 25,000 feet, we actually expose them to hypoxia and we show them and we revise with them that even the simple tasks like playing patty cakes or doing simple mathematics on pen and paper, uh, all those functions actually deteriorate rapidly when you're hypoxic at that, at that height. Well, we've come to the end of our two-parter on the Aeromedical Centre. We've seen pilots take a spin in the human training centrifuge and spring from the ejection seat trainer. We've checked out the hyperbaric chamber and I've taken a ride in the spatial disorientation trainer. This is just a portion of what the air crew go through every day. So, do you think you have what it takes to be one of them? Fourteen years ago, <laughs> skinny with hair. <laughs> this could result in unconsciousness. Wake it up! <laughs> <laughs>